Algebra 2, Concept 16b, Finding Zeros and Graphing Polynomial Functions. Now we're going to put all the concepts that we've learned in this unit together. So end behavior. This is simply the direction that the ends of the graph go. Zeros of a function. These are the values that you get for x when you set the polynomials equal to zero and solve. They are also called solutions and x-intercepts. And then finally, the concept of multiplicity. So this is when a zero or a solution comes from a factor that has a power other than one. So those are the concepts we're going to be dealing with along with the things you've learned in earlier concepts of this unit um, to graph these polynomials. So let's talk about end behavior. It's simply where the graph ends. And you can tell where it ends based on looking at the function's degree and sign. So look in this chart in the upper left. Notice you have a graph um, whose ends are in opposite directions. That means that you would have a function of an odd degree. Same thing with the graph on the right. Notice that the ends are opposite. In this case, this one's up and this one is down. Right. Take that off of there. So on the left, if you have a graph that is down on the left and up on the right, its end behavior is opposite, and then down and up, kind of like a positive slope, you know, of a line, the leading coefficient will be positive. And then if you look at the graph on the upper right, if it's up on the left and down, then the leading coefficient will be negative. Now look below. Notice how the end behavior is the same. So graph on the left, the ends both go up, and graph on the right, ends both go down. That means that the equations that would match with these graphs would have even degrees. Second power, fourth power. If they are both up, then the degree will be, I'm sorry, the leading coefficient will be positive. And if they are both down, then the leading coefficient will be negative. So now look back up in the upper left. Here's how you can describe the end behavior of the graph. Of the graph, it would be down and up. The next one is up and down, up and up, and then down and down. That is simply how we describe it. So thus, we can look at an equation and predict how the graph is going to end. And that's going to help us create a picture. One last thought is that if a degree of a function, whoop, I'll go back. If a degree of a function is opposite, then the end behavior, I'm sorry, if the degree is odd, then the end behavior will be opposite. And if the degree is even, the end behavior will be the same. So let's describe this end behavior. First, we need to look at the degree, which is four, the fourth degree, which is even, and the leading coefficient, which is negative five. So since it is even, that means our end behavior will be the same. And since it is negative, that means that the end behavior will have to be down and down. So you can describe it with words and with arrows. Now, if you look at the g function, notice it's not in standard form. So we need to rewrite it, or at least think of it in standard form. So now we have our first term and we can pick out our degree. So the degree will be the fifth power, which is an odd power. The leading coefficient is negative four, and it's negative. So that means five, the degree is odd, so our end behavior was gonna be opposite. If the leading coefficient is negative, that means the end behavior will be up on the left and down on the right, like a negative slope of a line. So we describe that as up and down. Now, I want you to write a polynomial, we'll do it together, um, whose graph has the same end behavior as the graph on the right. So notice the end behavior is opposite, so we know the degree has to be odd, and it's down and up. So we have choices. Um, we know that we could have first degree or the third degree, 
Um, <clears throat> And since it's down and up, that means the leading coefficient has to be positive. So I'm going to use a cubic function, and I'm just going to give a coefficient of positive 3 and have it x to the third power. I could add other terms, um, but I don't need to. I can just have y equals 3x to the third power. Now, multiplicity. Let's just go over this again. When a 0 or solution comes from a factor that has a power other than 1, that can help us also predict what the graph is doing. So odd powers will cross, and even powers will not cross. So if you look at this first um, problem, it is factored for us. x plus 1 squared, x minus 5. So the first factor has a power other than 1. It is an even power. So at that 0, the graph is going to not cross through the x-axis, but to bounce off the x-axis. So I'm setting each of those factors equal to 0 and solving. So at negative 1, the graph would touch the x-axis and bounce back. But at 3, I should say equals 3 there, it would cross through. So multiplicity is determined by the power of the factor. So look at the next one. Notice that the first factor is x cubed. The power is odd. So the graph would cross through at that 0. And then the next one, x plus 2, there's only one of them to the first power, so that's odd. It will also cross. That will, This will make more sense once we start graphing. Now here's our method to graph polynomials. First we look at the degree and the leading coefficient to determine their end behavior. Then we factor them and that'll be the point where it crosses the x-axis. Finally, we look at the multiplicity and to help us draw our final graph. So like I said, we're putting all of these concepts together. So let's start here. Let's pick out the leading coefficient, which is 3, and it's positive. The degree, which is also 3, and it's odd to determine the end behavior. So odd means opposite. Positive means it's going to be down on the left and up on the right. And then I usually just draw that on my graph. Now to find the zeros, we're going to take this function, set it equal to 0, and solve. So the first thing we do is divide by 3. And then to work backwards from something that's cubed, we simply take the cube root. So we only have one 0, which is 0, one solution. I look at the power that this came from, and it is an odd power. So it has an odd multiplicity, so it's going to cross through the x-axis at this point. So my function is going to be down on the left and up on the right. It's not a straight line, it has a little curve in it. <clears throat> and that's how I put all this process together. Let's try another. Oh, goodness. Okay, <laughs> so let's find the zeros of this polynomial. So x cubed, first of all, we need to pick out the leading coefficient, which is 1, and it's positive, and the degree, 3, which is odd. So that means our end behavior will be opposite, and since it's positive, it's like the last end behavior, down on the left and up on the right. So draw that on your graph. Now take your polynomial and set it equal to 0, and let's factor. Notice we have four terms, so we're going to factor by grouping. So group the first two terms together, factor out an x squared. You're left with x plus 5, and then factor out a negative 4. You're also left with x plus 5. Now we can factor out that common expression of x plus 5, and we're left with x squared minus 4. Now we're solving by factoring, so we want to keep factoring. We can factor that difference of squares, x squared minus 4. And it'll factor as x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now we have it all factored. Notice the powers of our factors. There's only one of each kind, so they're each to the first power. I set them equal to 0, and I find my solutions. Since they came from odd powers, they all have a multiplicity that's odd, and so they're going to cross. So now I place my points at negative 5, negative 2, and 2. Do you see them? And then I draw my curve. And so I start down and I cross through at negative 5, make a smooth curve back, cross through at negative 2, 
smooth curve back, cross through at positive two. And there we have a nice estimate of a graph for this kind of complicated polynomial. All right, let's repeat, okay, this process, leading coefficients five, which is positive, and the degree six, which is even. So we have to have same end behavior. Since it's positive, it's gonna be up and up. So let's put that on the graph. Now write your polynomial, set it equal to zero, and solve. Start by just factoring out a common factor of five x to the fourth. Then keep factoring that difference of squares. And then we'll set each of these equal to zero. Notice your first factor has an even power, so that's going to have an even multiplicity, and it's going to bounce where x equals zero. Our other two come just from a factor of one, so they will cross through. So now we're going to place points on our x-axis at zero, negative two, and two. Now, see how I uh, drew the curve? So I started up, I crossed through at negative two, made a smooth curve back to zero, but I don't cross through the x-axis. I touch and come back and then cross through at two. All right, this concludes our notes on 16b.